This last September marked the two-year anniversary of moving into my van, Dora. And man, what a two years we've had. Together, Dora and I have traveled a whopping 41,000 miles back and forth across the U.S. so many times that I've lost count. We've driven through all sorts of landscapes and many a backcountry road. Along the way, we've camped in some pretty spectacular places. And our fair share of not so glamorous ones too. We've even taken our first international trip together as we crossed the northern border and made our way up to Whistler, BC. We haven't been alone on this journey either. Thanks to Dora's spacious interior, we've had the pleasure of sharing the stoke of our adventures with friends and family along the way. I am so stoked to announce that I have partnered with a rad company called Omaze to bring you guys an even radder giveaway for your chance to win your very own custom camper van built by professionals, not built by me, and also help support a really cool cause, check out omaze.com forward slash sampler. Today, we're getting ready for yet another adventure with my friend Chance as we prepare to head west seeking respite from the winter. But before we head out, we need to give Dora some much needed TLC because, well, she's been a bit neglected recently. All right, so got my friend Chance here and Chance and I's first order of operations is to completely clean up Dora, get her looking perfect spick and span, and then we need to organize her so that we can fit Chance in. But what you guys care about is I'm gonna take that opportunity to kind of go through the van because it's now been two years since we've done this build and I get asked a lot about how things have held up. So I'm gonna run you guys through a lot of the major parts of the build and talk about how it's held up, what I think about the pieces that we used and how they're working today if I'd recommend them. But we have a lot of work ahead of us before that because I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty gross in here, check this out. I haven't done anything to keep to clean this place out in, in a long time. Chance found a freaking noodle down in here. I don't know where this came from or how long it's been in there, but it looks like stuff is growing on it. So I think the water situation is gonna be particularly gross. I have yet to look at that. And then another thing that's particularly disgusting is this fan back here. I hadn't noticed, but there's a dead bug in this thing. It's really gross, dude. You're gonna, you're gonna be disgusted. Did you just hit your head on the... Ooh. Chance, you gotta watch out, bro. This van is built for short people and you are not a short person. Not what you signed up for when you showed up, huh? <laughs> All right, so I think first order of operations is we need to empty the entire van out. We need to get everything out of the van and then we can give it a full vacuum, a full clean, and after that we can worry about organizing, so. All right, so this is a very rare look at a completely naked Dora. There is nothing inside. You can see straight through, and it's pretty cool to see it bare bones because I don't get to see it like this. I can actually walk straight through it. I think we're ready to actually get to work on cleaning this now that we've got it all stripped down and void of any uh, obstacles. I suppose a good starting point for today would be to talk about Dora herself and how she's held up over the last two years. Dora is a Ram ProMaster 2500 with a high top and 159 inch wheelbase. She's a pretty big gal, a fact that becomes all too apparent when washing her. I chose this particular model for a number of reasons. The first being that I felt like this was the Goldilocks size for me. Big enough to fit my bikes inside and still have plenty of living space, and small enough that I can still park in a normal parking space. In addition to this, the overall shape of the ProMaster is one of the most DIY friendly of all the vans thanks to its boxy nature and straight lines. Alright, 
we got off the top layer of grime. Now we're going for the bottom. The first round, she didn't look any cleaner at all. Dora is a front wheel drive van and has been averaging about 15 to 16 miles per gallon with a full build out. Overall, Dora is still in great shape mechanically, with the only maintenance I've had to do outside of the standard oil changes being two factory recalls that were taken care of quickly and without a hitch. Chance, I think Dora, you've already gotten into Dora's good graces. <laughs> like scrubbing my grandpa's teeth. I get asked this question all the time, and yes, I'm still super happy with my choice for the first van build. I think that if I were to do it all over again, I'd have to make a tough choice between another ProMaster or investing more money into a beefier 4x Sprinter rig. But I'll stop right there, lest I risk hurting little Dora's feelings. Luckily, you don't have to worry about hurting little Dora's feelings, and it's a good thing because, as I mentioned earlier, I am partnering with Omaze to give away a brand new custom 4x4 Sprinter rig with $80,000 worth of customizations. For those of you guys that haven't heard of Omaze, they're a really cool company that partners with creators like me to put on giveaways like this, all while raising money for charity. Pretty rad. A lot of you guys from the channel messaged me telling me how awesome it is that I have such an incredible van that I'm able to go out and go on such rad adventures with. And well, now it's your chance. And you don't even have to go through all the hassle that I did of buying the van, building it out, going through the whole insulation crisis. You don't have to do any of that. The van is gonna come to you already built. If you head on over to omaze.com forward slash sampler and donate $10, you will be entered for your chance to win your very own custom camper van. The best part about this whole thing is that we will also be helping raise funds for a really worthwhile charity called the Access Fund, whose mission is to preserve public lands, protect climbing areas, and restore impacted trails around the country. A mission I think a lot of us from the community can get behind. So for your chance to win your very own custom camper van and help support a really worthwhile cause, head on over to omaze.com forward slash sampler. With her exterior looking shiny and new, it's now time we turn our attention to the interior. Bring it on in! Looking back, one of my favorite mistakes I made when purchasing my van was moving forward on one that came with the factory floor option even though I didn't want to pay the extra money for it. Though I very nearly removed this floor altogether when beginning the build, we thankfully came to our senses and left it in the van. This floor has been an absolute dream in the van. Not only has it stood up incredibly well through the heavy use and abuse over the last two years, with only a couple chips here and there to show for it, but as you can see here, it also makes cleaning up any spills or sweeping up debris an absolute breeze. The one downside, like any other hard floor, is how cold it can get. But that was easily taken care of with the addition of a rug, which, not surprisingly, was also in need of a good cleaning. What do you think, dude? Looking good, feeling good. But most importantly... Smells good. Exactly. With the general cleaning of the van done, it's now time to get down to the nitty gritty, taking a look at specific parts of the van build that are in need of a thorough cleaning, starting with a particularly disgusting find we made earlier in the day. Oh my goodness, watch this, ready? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the gnarly! That's so gross! Oh, get it off! So this tank over here is the gray water tank. What's it look like down in there, man? Gray would be nice. That's, that's like, that's, is that an 84 vintage? I'm a little nervous about what we're gonna find in those, which is where we our drinking water comes from. It's pretty clean, like underneath, look at that. There's still water in here. Let's see what that looks like. I think I'd drink it. This is disgusting. There's something in the drain, so that, this might be what's smelling. What I mean, I don't know what that is, but that is gross. We have to clean this. While Chance and I continue to take care of this mess, let's talk about my thoughts on this more recent addition to Dora. Two big decisions I faced when adding this sink were first, what size to go with, and second, what method of actuation to use. Personally, I thought going bigger was a no-brainer. 
My sink is a 15 by 20 by 10, which gives me more than enough space to wash dishes without getting water everywhere. Or the more common route of just leaving the dirty dishes down in the sink to do later. As for the pump, I decided to go mechanical so that I had one less thing drawing from my battery, and I went with the foot pump so that I could pump water while still using both my hands. Both the foot pump and the sink have held up incredibly well without a single problem along the way. And because of that, if I was going to do this all again, I'd still opt for the same setup. If you thought that the worst was behind us, well, you'd be wrong. Because next up, we're going to take a look at my Max Air Deluxe fan, which hasn't received a single cleaning since its install two years ago. Oh, it's so gross. Holy cow. All right. Now I should just come right out. Look at this. That is so gross. Oh, there's two dead bugs. So I'm gonna open it up. Oh, everything is so, it's so disgusting. Oh my gosh. <sighs> there are certain people, you know who you are, that this just kind of like, it kills you inside a little bit. For those of you guys that don't know, I have the Max Air Deluxe fan, and I'm a humongous fan of this fan. <laughs> it's worked flawlessly for me. I found, you know, it was recommended online when I was doing my build and it has kept me very cool or cool enough in hot nights and it keeps the airflow going very well. Been working fantastic. I haven't had a single issue with this. Does not draw much power and um, I really like the fact that the hood is adjustable so that when it's raining I can drop it down uh, and make sure that no water is getting in because, you know, my head is directly below it. So yeah, huge fan of this. I would totally get it again. Highly, highly recommend getting the adapter that goes on the top that I found. If you're installing one of these, it's a huge help. This fan was way dirtier than I thought it was gonna be. Who knew? You need to clean it more often than every two years. All right, so let's pop over here and look at, ah, let's pop over here and look at the solar panel and clean this thing off. So door is powered by this single residential 300 watt solar panel. Thank you very much, Todd, my friend who gifted this to me during the build. It has been phenomenal throughout the last two years. This combined with the alternator of the car refilling the batteries when I'm driving has really served me well. I don't think I would opt for anything bigger in the future. I have had to do nothing to this over the last two years. The connections under there are good. All in all, really happy with my solar setup on the, uh, on the van on Dora. The final piece of my roof setup is the actual roof bars that my solar is mounted to. I spent a ton of time researching this and there are tons of options out there, but I'm actually really happy with these Vantech ones I ended up with. Not only are they one of the most affordable ones out there, but they were also super easy to install, utilizing the pre-existing mounting points on the van and thus requiring no drilling. Now that we've finished with the exterior elements, let's move back to the interior, starting with what is possibly my favorite part of our entire build. So let's start in the garage here with these slide trays, which were a very integral part of this build. These allow me to make the most out of the garage. In this tray goes four boxes that hold different things. I have a bike box, a camping box, a winter clothes box, and a miscellaneous. And on this, we stagger three different bikes. We used four 500 pound slides. These were expensive and kind of hard to find, but so far they have worked really well. So it locks both in. And out, I was having issues locking it out, but apparently it wants to work when it's on camera. I think that the, the main wear that I see on these trays is in the wood. So you can see the wood has started to splinter on the side there, but that's, you know, I think that's to be expected. The slides themselves actually still slide almost exactly the same as they did when I first got it. Really smooth in and out. Let's see if the other one is that good still slides perfectly. I'd say that's, man, those are in almost as good a shape as when they were brand new. Overall, I, I think that this was a huge win and I'm stoked on it. The key to unlocking the full potential of the bike tray are these incredible bike mounts. These are the Driveshaft HM from Rocky Mounts and they have been an absolute dream to use. Thanks to the extra height they provide, I was able to squeeze three bikes into a single 19 inch wide tray. And with the super nifty clamping mechanism, taking the bikes in and out is a breeze. 
I get a ton of questions about these mounts. So I've gone ahead and put a link to them in the description below, along with a lot of the other pieces that I talk about today for anyone that wants some more info. All right, next let's take a look at the bed. The bed, as many of you guys know, is just a two piece platform. It's attached by these piano hinges in the middle, both of which are doing totally fine. So the bed folds in half like this. And you can see I have my awesome sampler, live free, ride hard, get stoked, sticker wall underneath here. The wood is wearing a little bit, I've noticed. This edge takes an awful lot of abuse because there's this thing that happens when I'm pulling on this string and then I push the thing too soon. I jam it up into the molding before it is able to get to the rest stops that's supposed to be on. So yeah, I mean, definitely taking some abuse over here in the corner. Not something that's gonna affect the functionality of it. I'm really not worried. Over here, the high density plastic is, is it's all working phenomenal. I think that was a really good idea for, you know, instead of having the wood on wood there, which I think would have worn over time, this plastic is really doing well, both here on the support and down there. So this rope, it's been used since the get-go. And I think this is probably the thing that's seen the most wear out of the entire bed setup, because you can see it's starting to fray a whole lot. I might have to change this out. Though I do think this solution provides the best of both worlds, giving me the biggest bed possible while still having access to the most living space, I do find that I rarely put the bed up when it's just me in the van. That being said, this feature really shines when I have someone else in the van with me, like I will for this trip, allowing us an extra foot or so of ground space to both maneuver around it. All right, so this is one of the newest additions to the van, the 5K monitor that everyone is so stoked on. There was no denying that having a big monitor in here was gonna help me with my work. The real question was whether or not we could get it mounted in a way that would be safe and secure. In the build video, I showed you all how much time we spent making sure that the mount was strong enough. But that was only half the battle as we also spent a ton of time figuring out the optimal way to secure the monitor safely while driving. So we need some place to hook a bungee to secure all this and I have one of the original tie downs from the van build. So it's going back in the van to secure a screen, it's come full circle. <laughs> Two years later, it's back in there. All right, so I'm holding on for dear life here monitoring the monitor. We have come up with a prototype to secure it in place, and we're on a janky gravel road trying to figure out the worst case scenario to make sure it doesn't rattle. This is a yoga block for people like me that aren't like really flexible yet. You use this when you can't like get your hip onto the ground, and uh, it's gonna come in real handy here. I think it's good, dude. Boom, dude. Wow, it is going nowhere. I think that's that's the best thing we've come up with. That's the ticket. And now you got this D-ring here for no reason. This idea to secure it just using friction from the top and bottom, <laughs> it, it has worked flawlessly. And uh, more importantly, the mount has worked very well. And yeah, I do watch, I can watch movies from in bed. I know, I see a lot of you guys commenting about that. You better believe I do. Like, look at this. Boop. Not that we need to have the van empty to be doing these next few, but we're gonna do a quick rapid fire because I know there are gonna be people out there that are wondering. I'd say the unsung hero of my entire build and the very first thing that was actually installed in the van is this workbench. It never was intended to be the, the focal point of the build, but it has lived here since the very beginning and it has evolved. I don't know if I'd recommend people putting workbenches in the vans, but for me, someone who can't build something custom, I don't think I could have planned it better. Another integral part of the initial build of the van was this ARB fridge. This is the 81 quart version, and it is known for having one of the lowest draws on your battery. It requires very little energy to keep it running, and I can vouch for it that it is also extremely reliable. The hangboard, a lot of people have commented about this in the past. Yes, I have a, a fingerboard in here. No, I can't use the fingers. As you can see, it's at a slant, so it's like no matter what you try to do, your fingers slip out. I can use the jugs though. I am happy I have that in here. It's fun to be able to do some, some pull-ups, some, you know, hang, leg hangs and whatnot. Onto the swivel seats. Very common thing in all van builds, essentially. I chose to do both 
I'm very happy I did. Anytime someone's in here, like chance is gonna be, it's really essential to be able to have both of these turn around and open up. And they have worked really, really well. I have had to do nothing with them. So I started with 100 amp hour deep cycle battery. Now I have double the battery power and so far it's been phenomenal. For what it's worth, I thought that the 100 was okay, that I could get away with it. Um, I'm very happy with the 200 now though, so I probably will not be adding another one. All right, so now onto one thing that everyone wants to know about that I never talk about and it's and it's just down there. We gotta go take a look outside the van. So I know you guys were all skeptical about this when I added it. Everyone was writing in the comments, it's like, oh, you're gonna get in an accident, it's gonna fall down, it's gonna come off on the highway, you know, all that stuff. And you know, I've got news for you. This thing is super duper solid. <laughs> this thing is never coming off. For those of you that don't know, I put a gigantic piece of PVC pipe down here. I have a big eight by 10 outdoor carpet that sits in here, like actually sits in there because I never use it. I think I've pulled it out like three times ever. But yeah, it's, it's just a really convenient way to store things. A lot of people store fishing rods in something like this, but yeah, so far it's totally been fine and I would, I would do it again in a heartbeat. It still feels like it was just yesterday that my friends and I were staring at this empty shell of a van wondering what on earth we had just gotten ourselves into. Admittedly, we had no idea what we were doing. Yet, somehow, it all worked out. And to this day, I couldn't be happier with Dora. With a few finishing touches, our job is finally complete and Dora is looking good as new. After moving back in and getting Chance situated, Dora is officially road trip ready yet again. But before we head out, there is one last thing I've been wanting to do for a while now. This is a bit overdue, but it's pretty hard for me to get stuff in the mail. So while I've been in one place this year, I finally had something really special sent to me. I'm gonna be honest, I never actually was planning on getting this plaque, but during the filming of this video and thinking back on Dora, it's pretty funny. It, it both feels like I've been with Dora for a really long time because of all the really rad adventures that we've been on, but two years really also seems like it's gone by super fast. I'm so incredibly grateful that I, I am where I am and I am out here living life on the road out of Dora. It's my dream. You know, naturally, I think a lot about you guys when I think about that because this was through and through a community project. Dora would have never happened without you guys, my fans, my community, coming together and helping me make this all possible way back when, like way closer to this 100,000 mark than to the 500,000 that we're at now. This is gonna serve as a forever sign of, you know, where we've come from. Boom, that's pretty rad. <laughs> One day in the near future, we will hit that million subscriber mark. You mark my words and it's going right there. So note for everyone in the future putting stickers on this wall. Avoid this area. <laughs> all right, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all for watching and hanging out with me while we get Dora back good as new. And more importantly, thank you all for being here and being a part of this journey, whether you've been here from all the way back with Sheila or if you're new to the channel and just recently subscribed. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Anyway, I'll see you guys again soon. And until then, you know what to do. Live free, ride hard, and get stoked.